Here at the end of the fifth week, I wanted to provide another look at student learning outcomes uh, and some of the capabilities that Canvas makes possible. This dashboard is a result of data exported from Canvas. The dashboard itself is constructed in Google Data Studio. Just to orient you to what you're looking at, it's a five-point scale, zero being that the outcome wasn't accomplished, three is suboptimal, uh, four is sufficient, and optimal meeting of an outcome would be a five. So that's what these numbers you, you see on the screen mean. To date, there are 2,388 records. What those are are instances of outcomes being measured. I know that sounds like a large number, but every time I mark a rubric or a student answers a question on a quiz or test, that uh, links back to one of the course learning outcomes that you can see on the upper right side. We're looking at MS-150 statistics and SC-130 physical science here. Uh, seven different course learning outcomes are being evaluated in the two classes. You'll see some other uh, uh, dimensions, their major, the state, the gender, and the assessment type. This is why I get so excited about this uh, assessment capacity. One, it's near real time. I can produce this data, essentially it could be daily, I generate it weekly. It literally, literally takes me something like 30 to 45 seconds to export the data out of Canvas and put it into Data Studio. Um, the only thing that takes time is sometimes I decide to design a new dashboard. I'm not doing any extra work. I'm marking my papers at rubrics like I always do. My students are taking quizzes and tests. I've got 33 students. You can, if you go over here and just look at the MS-150 statistics uh, class by itself, you can see that there's 25 students down here in MS-150 statistics, and they're accounting for 1,520 outcomes. Uh, when I take out some things, that can cause a heat map to degenerate, but uh, some of that's a bandwidth issue. But the uh, record count for the nine students in physical science, 868. So I can drill down and do that, these sorts of things between the two classes. What you're looking at up here then is their major of the student, their state they're from. And over here, the small numbers are giving you the performance. You can see that there's small differentials between the males and the females, 4.6. For the males, there's... Uh, 12 males underneath this data, uh, 788 records, and there's 21 females underneath these records, generally about 1,600 records. Um, and I can do, I can, I should be able to do some cross numbers here, like there are 14 females in statistics, and uh, in uh, statistics there are some 11 males. So I can combine these to explore and dive through this data in any manner in which I wish to do so. I can also simply, I can do that up here too. I can say, well, I just want to focus on, for some reason, the Pompeii students. There's 20 students who are showing as being from Pompeii, generating 1,539 records down here. And I can see over here, all my other numbers are now reflective of the Pompeii students. From YAP, about seven students from yeah and you see uh, I've got a larger differential running between males and females now these students you can see from the course statistics physical science has appeared because these students are all in MS 150 statistics so the dashboard is mutating and changing every time I select something that I want to look at and so here you see those students are only involved with these three student learning, these course learning outcomes, 151, 152, 150.3. So you can explore this. You can look to see if there's particular issues. Uh, if I want to go back and uh, reset my dashboard to where I started from, 
I can go in and see whether this lower differential among females is in a certain area. And you can see it's actually lower for true for kosher and yap. But the complication is that for yap, you're talking about two female students, and for kosher, you're talking about another two. So there, it, the problem is small sample size. It's hard to tell what that data means at this point. There are two students in the statistics class. Sample size is too small to draw any statistical conclusion. But in a larger data set, you certainly probably could. But two facets to this that excite me. One, it's near real time. I don't have to wait to the end of the term to see how things are going and who's not succeeding, who's not learning as a group. I can look at it from a group point of view. Obviously, as an instructor, I can look at my grade book and see which individuals are not. But I can look for patterns in learning here. And so I've got learning data driving my decisions during the term. Our current systems with TrackDat are all post hoc. By the time we have the data, we cannot react to that data. We cannot adjust. We cannot correct. I can correct in real time. Every week I can pull this data up, every day if I wish, and uh, I, I can react to it. So it's near real time. But the other thing that excites me about this data, and the reason I get so excited about this, is there are, these breakouts we're looking at are not possible in our current systems. We do not have state-level data in track debt. We do not have majors in track debt. We do not have the ability to break out by assessment type in track debt. And to enter all of that would be a massive amount of work, and I am doing no extra work here. I am just marking my papers like faculty members do. What I did do was I did pull my course learning outcomes from a bank of institutional learning outcomes currently over a thousand outcomes are now in the institutional bank. They are not institutional outcomes. They are course learning outcomes. These here that you see uh, uh, at the course level, let's look at MS150.2, won't be too much there uh, because there's uh, only 200 records underneath that. But if I go into basic statistics and just look at those, I'll have 1,245 records from that. That's, thought, that's uh, coming out of um, both rubrics and quizzes. Uh, you can see, you can do that down here. 1,190 are coming out of quizzes, while uh, 55 are coming out of rubrics on open data explorations. So I can really slice and dice so many different ways. And that is something you cannot do from uh, from, it's just not possible from our, our track that systems. And so that's why I get so excited and babble about this. And the dashboards are things that I'm making, and they, they, they can be crafted in many different ways and can look at many different aspects of, um, of learning. This is just one dashboard. And they can make graphs and charts and that sort of thing, all kinds of fancy graphics that you can throw up. But uh, I get very excited about this because it's real time and I can slice and dice it so many different ways and I've got things that I can now go in and look at and sort out and see, okay, the students in Koshai are, they're, they're not, they're underachieving uh, against the averages being seen elsewhere. Um, I can look at numbers over here and say, okay, there's some there's signs of some, uh, maybe some weakness. Now again, you have to go in and dig through these specific numbers, like uh, how many students. There's only six students that are in the computer information systems program. So again, we're dealing with small sample sizes. So we have to be a little careful about drawing conclusions. But our, our low group seems to be the 3.69. That's our agricultural and natural resource students. Um, and uh, the lowest here does seem to be uh, they're underperforming on quizzes, it appears. Um, and it's it's both the men and the women are performing weekly on quiz rather weekly on the quizzes. And it's not the basic statistics they're having difficulty with. They're having difficulty with uh, the the worst number here appears to be 
uh, discussion and conclusions. This would be in lab reports um, down here. This is agricultural natural resources. This is coming in in, in lab reports uh, for quizzes. Uh, let's take the gender out of the mix and put. Oh, there's only okay. So we're down to just two students here. We have two female students in agricultural natural resources that are having trouble with their laboratory report conclusions. That level of m my ability to de dive down and being the instructor, knowing what those numbers come from, uh, and knowing, okay, those students, I, that's two that need reach out and assistance with as a group. Um, that's just, uh, to me, that's just phenomenal. And this track that will never take me to this place. I get real insight and real learning in real time, long before the term is over, as does anybody else who looks at the dashboard. They can't see the individual student names, they can't see grades, they can only see what you've seen today. Um, so the, it, it's, uh, it can be shared with other faculty members to, to look at and explore. And this will work for any course. Obviously, the dashboards will get a little bit more involved as more courses show up, but um, they can be designed to filter by division or by other by other facets, depending on how you construct them and some of the other things you do. You can filter for different capabilities. Potentially, these things can actually get quite large, and they scroll and they have search boxes, so you can handle many rows of data, as they say. Well, let me reset my dashboards back to turn some of these guys and reset some of these guys back. And that's the dashboard. I, my apologies for the length of the video, but this, to me this is just so important and gives us so much capability, so much promise. Uh, I cannot do this in Schoology. It is simply not possible. And the other piece that I, I get excited about when I talk to people is underneath this, what powers all of this capability is that every single course learning outcome over here maps to a program learning outcome. And the program learning outcomes will map on up to the institutional. And so this, that, that, that part of the underneath the hood, I can go back and look at those core, the, those other institutional metrics uh, on another dashboard that I've got uh, to look at the program learning outcomes and the institutional learning outcome performance. But um, it, it, it to me is, if you will, a grand unified theory for, for education uh, and learning and, and seeing learning. Thank you for watching and uh, again my apologies for the length.